York City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls have always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. It's time for Hot Topic. Friday. Aren't you glad the weekend's here? Please. So, you know, next to being here with you, one of my favorite places to be, okay, and at home with a comfortable robe and the blinds <laughs> drawn, my third favorite place to be is the grocery store. And I tell you this all the time, I love it. And because I like to buy the fresh produce, so it goes bad pretty quick. So you have to go, like I go to the grocery store three times a week. I shop here in Manhattan, and I also shop in Jersey. But I, I go three times a week, and then the boy, you know, if you have a teen boy, then you know, they eat like Marmaduke. <laughs> so, um, but here in Manhattan, the two grocery stores that I love, the three, are within walking distance of our studio. And the problem with Manhattan, when you shop here, which is why I like living in Jersey, <laughs> is that you can't take the grocery cart past you know, outside. <laughs> but I told you that I like going to the grocery store and I don't have time. But anyway, here I was yesterday at the Gristides here in Manhattan. Um, just so <laughs> you know. <laughs> what all's are doing, <laughs> okay? Uh, the thing is that I didn't even notice who was taking the picture, but the person sent it to Hot Topics <laughs> with, with the phrase, caught her. Okay, let me explain what you're looking at. First of all, you know I love a negligee. I told you that, it's not, it's not a thing. You know, just spaghetti straps, you know, and go. You know, and um, my blinged out shopping cart, our art director, Michael Lee, did it, so I keep it. I know, good, good. How do you shop? What do you wear? <laughs> anyway, moving along. So we finally know who's posing nude for the last issue of the nude Playboy. The most obvious person, Pamela Anderson. You know, I've always liked Pam. She's one of those people friend in my head. You know, I don't know her, but I feel like if we knew each other, we'd have a good time. She's 48 years old, she's got the kids, and you know, take the nudity away. You know, just, have you ever seen her like do interviews and stuff? She seems like a, a really nice woman. You know, her birthday's July 1st. Why do I know such randomness? <laughs> Doesn't matter, because she's a cancer. And I, like me. Um, so that's how I know she's probably a really sweet person. I, she's a friend in my head. And I don't have dream guests for our show here. You know, I'm over that. Uh, but if she ever came here, I would faint. I would. She doesn't do, she doesn't do like talk shows and stuff, you know, a whole lot. So I don't, you know, whatever. I'll probably never meet her. But anyway, she's posed 14 times for Playboy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. More, 
more than anybody else. And she's spreading in a, tw a 12 page spread. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, but here's my thing. Okay. So she's got two sons and they're 13. 19 and 17 <laughs> with Tommy Lee. She's got two sons and she said she didn't want to necessarily do Playboy again because she's very aware of what her sons went through when they were growing up. They would get teased relentlessly because their mom is the, you know, the Playboy girl. So she went and asked her grown sons and they both were like, mom, do it. Yes. I kind of figured that this is where Playboy was going to go. I mean, who else would you get? The only other person besides Pamela Anderson is the dearly departed Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah. She... I would have loved to have known her or met her or something. You know, I would have loved to have. Do you remember where you were when you found out that she died? Yes. Do, like there's certain times in your life, I know that this is very random, you know, like for a different generation, they remember where they were when they heard about JFK. You know, for me, I, we were in Aruba, me and the Kevins, and I had gone into the room to get my now and laters to bring back out <laughs> <laughs> the Apple ones. <laughs> I had gone back to the room to get my now and laters and uh, bring back to the pool with the Kevins, and the TV was on, and I was stunned, and I, cr I cried like like somebody that I really knew. Like I cried, I, it, I was like riveted. Um, but yeah, she would have been good for this last one. Now what Playboy is going to do is they're going just with articles. But if Playboy, if, <laughs> if Playboy is a men's magazine and we know that men are visual creatures, you know what I mean? Like men, men like to see stuff, not necessarily read stuff. Anyway, but good for you, uh, Pam. Oh, by the way, Pam, you still, hands down, have got the best sex tape ever. I mean, I watch it by myself before, I watch it me and my husband, but now it's on the VHS, so I, I can't figure out how to watch it. But it, it, clap in the audience if you've ever seen their tape, clap. You have? You have? It just seemed like, like not contrived sex with a shower rod and, and Kim and Ray J. It was real. Like this was a really loving couple going to the lake. Remember they went to the lake? It was just the real deal. She and Tommy Lee, oh legendary. Let's move along. So, Christina Milian is in hot water with a lot of her fans because um, of how she did her daughter's hair. Now, Violet, remember, um, produced by The Dream. He produces music, but he also, he also produced uh, the little, little girl. Remember, she, he and Christina were married and then he cheated with the assistant. And the receipt pictures were all online. Anyway. And so um, Christina posted a picture of five-year-old Violet and she's being attacked. Oh. Well, you know what? All right, hold off on the hair for a moment. This dress is giving me life. <laughs> Isn't it cute? Yes. All right, but you're more disturbed about the hair? Yes. Okay, Christina, the hair is heavy, all right? <laughs> it, it's heavy, she's only five years old, she's gonna need my wig by the time she's eight, <laughs> okay? And so Christina went back on social media to let all of the people who were criticizing her know that, you know, oh, here's what she says, which I still don't think that this is enough, Christina, but it's okay. <laughs> You're the mom. All right, for those of you more concerned with Violet's hair, uh, her hair isn't in twists. It's another method used where they are tied into her cornrows. The hair isn't heavy, Violet likes it and it's not damaging, XL. I venture to say the hair is too heavy for a five-year-old. I, and I also, I also venture to say that 
five year five year olds aren't responsible enough to be able to go to the bathroom and not have a dip in the toilet or or you know or pull them or pull them out while they're sleeping. Or, or pull them out while they're sleeping or something like that. And you know, what if she's you know, on the merry-go-round and one gets caught or something. And I get what Christina's saying about they're attached to the cornrows, but Christina, maybe you should be more specific. Like, are they clip-ins where you can clip them out? Or are they sewn in? Because attached means a whole bunch of different things. Uh, it just looks too heavy. And you know, human hair is heavier than, than synthetic hair. Where are my hair girls? You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Synth now Synthetic hair. <laughs> really? Oh God, shady cameraman. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, here's the thing about little girls. Um, a lot of white people, you don't really understand this, but people of color, or maybe white people, if you happen to have more kinky, like you gotta manage the hair. Like, shout out to my Jewish friends, you know? Um, but when, when little heads crowned, when his head crowned, well, you know, when I was pushing, and then I saw it was a boy, I was like, thank God. <laughs> and this, the hair thing, it's like, sit down. <laughs> right? Every mother knows that. You know, sit down, give me the grease, I can't. Um, but uh, shout out to you, Christina, and, and hi, Violet. Is your hair heavy? Okay. <laughs> Speaking of hair, can we talk about your hairdresser and the salon scene? Okay, so, you know, I don't go to the salon on account of camera phones and as soon as you start rubbing my head, I start to fall asleep. So all you have to do is quickly just take the shot. So I don't. We have a little salon set up back there and, and I get it done private, Antoine, my natural hair. But I gotta tell you something. Even more so than camera phones, the number one reason that I don't miss salon life is the salon talk. I am not working. I don't remember what the hot topics were yesterday. <laughs> I don't feel like talking. Do you like talking at the hair salon? Clap if you do. Well, you know, the hair salon, like the barbershop, they're a form of um, socialization. It's just that after you've worked all day, I don't know, I'm just not that girl. I never have been, like, stop talking. <laughs> um, well, if you're like me, there's a salon in the UK if you'd like to fly over there. <laughs> But take note, America, we need what they call the quiet chairs, like they have in the UK. The quiet chair, yes, exactly. The quiet chair is where you sit and you get your hair done and it, you already know um, nobody's going to talk to you. Isn't that terrific? I mean, you know, and it's not about being a not nice person or something like that. It's just that, you know, I waited for this appointment all week and I really don't feel like talking. And a lot of people, a lot of you all don't have a backbone to tell people don't talk. <laughs> like my Emily Roth child, the regal Emily, she's on my Hot Topics team. So we're in our meeting and she's saying, you know, my salon person talks incessantly and all I want her to do is just shut up and do my hair. <laughs> I'm like, and Emily, why don't you say something? She's like, I can't. I was like, why? And so I said, I'll teach you how. Here's what you do, Emily. <laughs> this, is, this is what you do. In order, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And if you address somebody by their name, somehow psychologically, it seems more endearing. So say I'm getting my hair done by a girl named Allison, okay? And, and I'm in and you know, I'm laying back. And she goes, so who's coming on the show next week? She says to me. And here's what you do. Allison, dear, <laughs> I love you, but I, I really don't come here for conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Right? But here's the thing. That didn't seem mean, did it? All right, clap if you think it seemed mean. 
oh well. <laughs> and your tip will reflect if you continue talking. <laughs> and I guess so will my haircut. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I like that idea with the salons. Okay, Lady Gaga. So she's Billboard Magazine's Woman of the Year. Yeah. And, and inside, she said some really shocking stuff about almost quitting the music industry last year because everyone turned their back on her. Now, first of all, I picture Lady Gaga to be fearless. I mean, this is the same woman who got carried on the red carpet in an egg <laughs> and wore a meat dress. I don't know, I just, I really did, I really did think that she was fearless. But when, when she made the comment about how people turned on her, I'm just like, really? Stephanie Geramato? You count on the permission of others for your happiness? I, I, was, I, I was a little shocked at that. I, I was a little shocked. I thought, no, I don't have a quote. I thought she was stronger than that. I'm glad she didn't leave. I mean, the music hasn't been doing well at all, but she is on that show. What's it called? American Horror Stories. American Horror Stories. But these are her side jobs. You know, she was about to quit her main job because you all, she felt, turned on her. And my thing is, when people turn on you, that's when you pull your boots up even higher and show them. But, you know, that is, you know, and for you watching, if, if somebody's turning on you, don't retreat, don't get weak. You know, you are the strongest person that you know. I remember when I first started um, a job in Philly, um, when I was left dead on the turnpike from New York, and I, and I, and I worked in Philly, and um, I just had a seven week miscarriage, uh, like the same week I was there, and uh, then I started my job. At the end of the work week, my boss, a woman, um, not that that matters, but I'm just you know, describing. My boss called me into her office, my program director at that time, okay? Now I'm brand new to Philly, I just had the miscarriage, you know, uh, you know I was left for, for dead from New York, and, and I had to start a new life. So she goes, close the door. So I closed the door, right? <laughs> and I sat down. I was like, yes? You know, best behavior, first week there. You know, you don't show out until you've earned your bones. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, yes? <laughs> so she goes to me, Wendy, you know, I want things to really work for you here in Philly. You know, this is a city that could really embrace and love you. But I don't want you to become a dinosaur in your radio style. She said, what you did in New York you know, this is a different kind of city. We're more family oriented and you know, so on and so forth. She said, I don't want you to become a dinosaur and I want you to do well here. Well, you know I'm a crier, okay? So my eyes start to sting, like something's about to happen. And I was only there for a week. And then I got misty. And then the meeting was over and I closed the door. I blink, blink, blink. Oh my gosh, I still get upset thinking about this. Oh my gosh, it's okay, I won, but no, no. no. I still get, ugh, I still get misty thinking about this because this was one of those times where I didn't need to hear that. And um, I ran outside to my SUV and I, I put the, the sun shield up for privacy, and I called my father and just vented. And I still kept my same dinosaur style, which is the same thing I do right here. I'm good. Uh, uh, um. Sorry. No, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Sorry. That was just, that was a really pivotal time in my life because if I changed my style, I would be corny 
and not authentic to myself, and then you all wouldn't be watching. Yeah. By the way, I've run into her a few times. Yeah. No, listen, no, listen. And, and every time I see her, I'm like, hello, it's me, the dinosaur. <laughs> Okay. So look. <gasps> I'm gonna sleep good tonight. You know how a cry makes you sleep real good? Oh gosh. Okay. Love and Hip Hop is back with a brand new star. It's our friend Remy Ma. And we get to see Remy. You know, Re Remy? Yeah. Remy, you look great. So, so Remy, remember she was in jail and Papoose, her boyfriend, stood by her side, or her husband, I forgot. S husband stood by her side and there's Papoose and Remy and we're gonna see her, um, the trials and tribulations of them getting her life back on track musically. We got it, for, it's our hot clip of the day, so roll it. Now I'm free to take back my spot on top where Remy Ma belongs. Kill, you make me so excited when you come out. Like, I just be ready to rap. Be in the back like this? I be in the like. <laughs> Hi, Pat. What's good? Time to go. Time to go. Let's go. No staying out tonight. We gotta go now. I'm not a prisoner anymore. I don't want to keep going by somebody's rigid plan. That is not true. You weren't the one that was in a cell for six years, four months, and five days. That jail traumatizes families, not just the individual. Well, that's a reason to watch, you know? Speaking of love and hip hop, you know, um, here in New York, Mendici, um, he is currently um, sentenced to, uh, recently sentenced to eight years in prison. He looks innocent though, right? He's guilty as hell, look. <laughs> look, apparently it was proven that he trafficked pounds and pounds of cocaine and heroin. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you would never, that's why you can't judge a book by their cover. Wouldn't you just think he's a nice young man with good teeth? <laughs> when in actuality, he's the pusher. Okay. Like, really? So now he's leaving his um, wife or girlfriend or whatever behind, his wife. Right, they got married on the TV. I don't, I don't watch weddings on TV. I don't, I don't like them, but anyway and kids, and he's gone for eight years. Now, the question is, is she gonna sit for eight years and wait for him? Yeah. Well, Brendan just threw the sign up. I only have 15 seconds left on Hot Topics. Otherwise, I would go, we can go into it. Uh, anyway, Love and Hip Hop returns December 14th at eight on VH1.